maps so that you can have those out along with your notebooks. As we take a look at slavery and the West, how slavery expands in this country. And so we're going to start off with a little review. We're going to start off with a little review because our previous test focused on slavery and what? Anybody remember? The last unit focused on, we talked about slavery and abolitionists, and we also focused on something, the first two short answer questions that you wrote on Tuesday dealt with the North and the South. And what specifically with the North and the South? North and the South is correct. What specifically? Some of it dealt with transportation. Comparing them. We're looking at, we were comparing and contrasting. We were looking at the differences of these two regions. So, as a little review, there were differences that were appearing in our country. And they were differences between two regions. Even today, we have differences between the north, the south, the west, southwest. We have different dialects, accents, things like that. We use different words. But it doesn't cause us to really fight too much anymore. There are political differences between the north and the south today. The North tends to lean more towards the Democratic Party. The South tends to lean towards the Republican Party. But that still doesn't mean that we're out to kill each other. But back in the 1800s, we had those differences between the North and the South growing bigger than they had been before. And I'm just going to throw out some examples here. You don't need to write the examples down because you should know about these differences already. Remember, there were differences in how the economy worked. North was industrialized. The South was... Anybody remember the word I use? Related to the word from geography. Starts with an A. That would be agricultural. Agricultural. Industrialized versus agricultural. Education system. In the north, they had good public education. In the south, very little education. And it was normally private schools. And slavery, of course, was another one of those differences. And so what happens is each of the regions, north and south, and let's just divide the class. We have the south over here, the north over here. Now, you guys in the north, you become very proud of your region. It's sort of like, especially when we just had the Vikings playing and everybody was pro-Vikings and everything was Minnesota Vikings, Minnesota Vikings. You begin to get very, very proud of your region. And the people in the south over here on this side of the room also get very proud in their, re in their region, their traditions, their culture. And the problem is that each side begins to fear what the other side might do. Each region begins to fear the other because you don't trust them. Those Southerners are thinking about that other side of the room. Hmm, I don't trust what they're going to do. I bet they're going to try to take my slaves away from me. I bet they're going to try to tell us what to do because there are more of them than we have in our, in our region. I don't trust them any farther than I can throw them. And those people in the north over here on this side, I don't trust those hillbillies over there. They're stupid. They don't go to school. They don't know what they're talking about. They need to listen to us. Get rid of that old-fashioned system of slavery. I bet they're going to try to make us all have slaves. I don't need any slaves, but I bet they're going to force it on us. They're strange down there. I don't trust them. Both sides begin to question the other. 
and they begin to get extremely loyal. They get to the point where they are so loyal they really don't think about things. It's either our way is best, I'm not even going to listen to your argument. It's all black or white. There's no areas of gray. And this very strong loyalty to one's region had a name. Anybody remember from your reading from your assignment? Starts with an S. It was discussed in that section of the book. That would be called sectionalism, yes. That very strong loyalty to your section, to your region of the country. That's sectionalism. And so we have these differences appearing between the North and the South. And again, this is a review. Bringing what we've already talked about in previous uh, weeks into what we're looking at now, how slavery grows across the country. Sectionalism. Now, in order to understand the rest of what's happening today, I need to either teach you because you've never had it before, or refresh your memories on how the U.S. government works. You'll have an entire class on U.S. government. It's called civics in ninth grade. But for right now, like my new transition. Awesome. Ooh. And I made this slide. I'm proud of this slide. I think it's nice looking. We have Congress. What does Congress do? Anybody remember? What is the point of Congress? I'll give you a hint. It's the same thing that Parliament did in Great Britain. What does Congress do? It's the same thing that Parliament does. What does Congress do? The same thing as Parliament. Logan? Congress makes laws. And Congress meets at the, at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And there are two parts to Congress. And the two parts to Congress that make laws, they have to agree. Now, can anybody tell me one of them? What is one of the houses of Congress? One of the parts of Congress. Congress is made up of two. One starts with an H, the other one starts with an S. One is the Senate, and the other one is House of Representatives. So we have the House of Representatives over on this side, and over on this side of the building, we have the Senate. Now, we as citizens, and when you are old enough, you will join in on this, elect representatives to both of these. We have representatives in the House of Representatives, and we have senators in the Senate. But the number of senators and the number of House members for each state is determined by two different things. Representation in the House of Representatives, does anybody know what that's based on? Yes. It's based on how many people live in a state. Good. It's based on population. The number of representatives that a state has in the House of Representatives is based on population. So larger states have more representatives. California, New York, they have way more than Minnesota because their population is way more. Who has more representatives, Minnesota or South Dakota? Minnesota, yeah. South Dakota doesn't have a lot of people, so they have fewer representatives in the House of Representatives. What about the Senate? How is representation based in the Senate? How do states determine how many senators they get? It's two per state, so it's equal representation, yes. Every state is equal when it comes to the Senate. Every state gets two. House of Representatives, it's based on population. Biggest states get more. Senate, everybody's equal. 
And you have to know that when we're talking about all these compromises and that balancing that's going on, because the balancing happens in the Senate, not in the House of Representatives. Everybody clear on that? As we go forward today, we are focusing on the Senate, where it's equal representation for each state. No state is stronger or weaker than any other state. In the House of Representatives, there are strong states and there are weak states. Minnesota is sort of a middle-of-the-road, semi-weak state. So, the United States in 1819. By 1819, if you look at your Missouri Compromise map, by 1819, all the states in the north were what? By 1819, all the states north of the Ohio River, north of the border between Maryland and Pennsylvania, all the states north of that line were what? Free states. All the states in the north had, had by that time, given up slavery, abolished it, outlawed it. And so we know, review from just this last slide, each state has two senators in the Senate. And does anybody remember how many states there were in 1819? Every time I say that, I always want to do Alligator Street. My mother, your mother, lives across the street. 1819. Alligators. Yeah. 22 states at the time. We had 22 states at the time. And how many free states were there? How many were free? 11 free states. And see, I sort of have this sort of green to signify free. We had 11 free states, and then if you don't remember, you can always do the math right now. How many slave states did we have? We had 11. Which means that if we look at the Senate, <laughs> what could we say about the Senate? in terms of representation from free and slave states. The Senate is considered what? Here's a hint. The Senate is considered, Victor? Balanced, yes. The Senate is balanced. Neither senators from the North nor from the South can force anybody to do anything that they don't want to. So you have 22 senators from the South here, because 11 states, two per state. You, on this side of the room, you have 22 senators. Now, remember, Southerners, you're afraid that they might try to take away your slaves and tell you to do what you don't want to do? They can't tell you to do that, because you have 22 senators, they have 22 senators. They don't have the majority. Northern people, you have 22 senators. The Southerners can't tell you that you need to have slaves. Or they can't tell you to do anything you don't want to do because you are balanced, you are equal. This balance is made on purpose so that both sides, even though they're beginning to fear each other, feel a little more comfortable. Now I'm going to explain this balance a little more here. Why they maintained that balance. Yes, sir.
if a senator were to die, a southern senator were to die, uh, that state would be able to replace that senator. Could they vote while they were gone? It takes a while to get a bill into Congress. Uh, and it would require everybody in the North to say, okay, let's try to cheat the South, which I don't think that would happen. And in the Senate, there's something called a filibuster, where if there are senators can say, we are going to speak and give speeches nonstop. And the only way to stop that filibuster is for 60% of the Senate to vote to stop it. So if the North had even tried, the rest of the Southern Senators would have started a filibuster that the Northern Senators wouldn't be able to stop until that seat was filled. And that's something that has been happening with the health care stuff today in our Senate, trying to deal with health care reform. The magic number is 60 to prevent anybody from just speaking forever so that the bill cannot be passed. So. What about this balance? This balance thing has everything to do with what's called states' rights. Now, the South, again, the South feared that the North might get too strong if they controlled the Senate. Again, here is another review. The South you guys on this side of the room, you feared the North gaining control because you don't trust them. You don't know what they might do if they gain control of the Senate. You don't trust them. Now, North, you don't trust them either. The South, the biggest fear was that the North would try to outlaw slavery if they got control of the Senate. They feared other things, but that was their biggest fear. Because of those abolitionists in the North always blowing a lot of hot air talking about freeing slaves. When it came time to talk about slavery, the South said that the national government, the Senate, shouldn't have anything to do with it. Who do you think they said should decide on slavery? They do not feel it is a question for the national government to handle. The South said the bank should decide the issue of slavery. Well, not the Senate, because that's national government. They said the Senate should not even interfere or deal with slavery whatsoever, because the, the states should decide. The states should decide. Remember when we were back in the early American history unit, and we talked about the Constitution? And I made a big deal about something. Remember the Constitution said specific things that the national government could do? Remember that? Remember I said, the Constitution says blah, 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 blah. And at the very bottom, what did I say? Remember we talked about this with regulating speed limits and driving? The Constitution says the national government can do this, 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 and this. And at the very bottom it says, yes, anything not included in this list is not a national power. It belongs to the states. Guess what? The Constitution does not say anything about the national government being able to regulate slavery. So the South has a major point. The Constitution does not give the national government the power to control slavery. 
if it's not specifically listed in the Constitution, it is not a national power. If it's not specifically listed in the Constitution, it is not a national power. It does not say the national government can control slavery. No. It is the southern battle cry. They basically tell the people in the northern part of the country, on the other side of the room here, Y'all better not try to take away our slaves. None of your business. If you don't want slaves in your states, that's fine. That's your decision. Constitution says we have the right to control slavery. It is a state right. It is not a national power. It is the document that you all believe in, so don't try to do anything illegal our state's rights. It is not part of the national powers. Just like speed limits today are not part of the national powers. Education is a state issue, not a national issue. The Constitution does not give the national government the right to control education. It tries to. But technically, according to the Constitution, that is not a national power. The South is big on states' rights. Be it slavery, be it taxation, be it anything, states' rights is what they are big on. Then we get a problem. Because we have something that happens. There's a state that wants to enter the United States. It is currently part of a territory, and regions of a territory, if they have a large enough population, can then ask to enter the country and join as a state and not just be a territory. States have more rights. States have representation in the Congress. States get senators. And the Senate has to approve any new states. What was the state that wanted to enter the U.S. at this time? What state wanted to join the United States? Missouri! Missouri wants to join the U.S. in 1819. What was the biggest flaw? What was the, well, not really flaw, what was the hang-up? What was the thing preventing this from happening quickly? Hey, it's a new state. They're U.S. citizens. Let's welcome them with open arms. Why would it unbalance the Senate? Okay, what was special about Missouri? <laughs> slaves. Missouri has slaves. So Missouri comes, basically sends representatives to speak to Congress and says, we want to join. You on this side, do you want Missouri to join? Yes, you're Southerners, you like slavery. Missouri wants to be a slave state. You guys in the North, do you, are you going to vote yes, let them join? No, if you do that, they'll get two more senators than you. And then they'll be able to tell you what to do. The North says, no way. We are not going to give you two extra Senate seats. We do not trust you. So when it comes up to a vote, the North says, uh-uh. You're not getting in. Senate cannot get a majority. 22 say let them in, 22 say don't let them in. 
The Senate is deadlocked. Meaning they cannot come up with a decision to let them in. So Missouri can't come in. And the people of Missouri are kicked off. They want to join. They don't understand why not. And so a southerner from the great state of Kentucky comes up with a plan. Anybody remember the guy's name? Some of you will play with his last name in our class. As you make piggies. As you make piggies. Henry Clay, there he is. Handsome, young, well, not really young man. That's Henry Clay. And he's this guy from Kentucky who comes up with this idea. He comes up and proposes what is called a compromise. And a compromise is something where both sides get something out of the deal. He goes to the southerners, southern senators and says, okay, we need you to agree to give the North something in return for Missouri. Goes to the North, northern senator says, okay, northerners, Missouri wants to join, so we need to come up with something that you want in return. So every side gets something. And that becomes known as the Missouri Compromise. And what happens? What happens to Missouri as a result of the Missouri Compromise? What happens to Missouri as a result of the Missouri Compromise? It becomes a state. What kind of a state? It enters as a slave state. That's right. Missouri enters as a slave state. Okay, you got what you wanted. This side is happy. Like, hey, yeah, two more Southern senators. Two more Southern senators. Now, Northerners, what did you get out of this deal? You had to get something in order for this to happen. What did you get out of this deal, Northerners? What did you get? Remember, this was in your reading, this was in your assignment, and dealing with your map for today. Oh, okay, there's one northerner that knows, but there are a lot of southerners that know. Boy, northerners, remember, you thought that those southerners were stupid because they don't go to school? You guys are the ones that are looking quite uneducated here. Yes. Yes, we take apart of a state. We take Massachusetts and we cut off part of Massachusetts to create a new state called Maine. Up until this time, there was no state called Maine. What is now Maine was all part of Massachusetts. So we chopped off part of Massachusetts, created Maine, and Maine enters as a what? Maine enters, now those northern hands go up. Maine enters as a free state. Yes. Maine enters as a free state. Now, Henry Clay is a smart guy. He's like, okay, we are now what again? Balanced. But there's some more territory out there because Missouri came from a territory. Missouri was created out of the Missouri Territory. But there's still all that land that it hasn't been created into states which we bought from France still sitting there. What land did we buy from France that is still sitting there waiting to become states as more and more people get there? Look at those southern hands. Those southerners are quite bright today. What was that, that land that we bought from France? 
Yes, Northerners. Good. Louisiana Purchase. Henry Clay's like, okay, we had a problem here keeping balance. Eventually, there will be more states created out of the Louisiana Purchase. So let's come up with a solution for that right now so that we don't have to fight about this later. So they create a line, an artificial line, the border between slavery, between North and South. Anybody remember, or if you want to look on your maps, what line only in the Louisiana Territory or Louisiana Purchase Region, what line was the border between slavery and freedom? Look at your map. You labeled it on the Missouri Compromise, or you should have. Thirty-six degrees, thirty minutes north in the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase had a line drawn from the bottom of Missouri to the border with Spain slash Mexico. Anything north of that was free. Anything south of that would be slave. In the Louisiana Purchase only. Done. Uh, once you are a free state, slave state, with these agreements, you stay that way. Because it's written into your, it would be written into your constitution. And that constitution has to be approved by Congress in Washington, D.C. So you wouldn't have a southern state that decides, okay, fine, we're going to get rid of slaves. Would have been unheard of back then. So we get a map that looks like the map that you have. Done. All of this. Free. All of this. Slave. And here's that line between the two, the 3630 line. Notice it does not go into land we do not own. And notice we do not own this area up here. It's not been agreed upon, so none of our laws work there. Close and clear. Now, we get some new lands. We're good. We have a balance. We have some new land there. What land gets added? We get some land added. And this is a review from the U.S. Grows section. We got one country that decides to join us, an independent republic that joins us, and then we get something as a result of us tricking another country to do something. See how what we talked about before is now coming back? There's a reason why we covered it. What is one piece of new land that we got as a result of a country asking to join our country? Country asks to join our country. Mexico joined us and became part of our country. What? Texas. We get Texas. Texas joins us. And then President Polk wanted some land. He tricks a country into war. As a result of that war, we get a chunk of land called the blah, 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 blah. The blah, 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 blah. The Mexican session, yes. Now the question is, we got this new land, what do we do with slavery? Because this is not in the Louisiana Purchase region. This is totally new. We don't have any laws that deal with this. It brings up that debate. Southerners in the Senate, you want that area to be open to slavery. Northerners, you want it to be closed to slavery.
they have to come up with a new agreement. Anybody remember the name of that new agreement that they come up with to deal with the slavery issue in Texas and the Mexican session? We already have the Missouri Compromise. Now we have the Compromise of 1850. So by 1850, we have gotten more states over the years and we have maintained that, what? Where have we maintained that balance? In the Senate, yes. By 1815, there are 15 free and 15 slave states. Fifteen free, fifteen slave, and a new state wants to join. A state that got a lot of people very quickly because in 1849, something was discovered there that brought a lot of the people there trying to get rich. That would be California, the minor 49ers. California has a lot of people and they want to join as a free state. Now, look at your maps for the Missouri Compromise. One easy thing would be, okay, let's just extend that 3630 line all the way over to the coast now. What would happen to California? If that line was con continued, that simple way of fixing this, what would happen to California? It'd be cut in half. We part slave, part free. Well, California just wants to be free. Doesn't want slaves. So that old compromise doesn't work. Southerners, are you going to let California enter as a free state? No. You don't want that to happen. You do not want those northerners, which are proving today, not to remember much that they should with their good education. You don't want them controlling the Senate. So you guys start saying, if, we, if they try to get California in, we're going to leave this country and form our own country. We are going to, anybody know the word? We are going to, blah, blah. We are going to, we are going to secede. Southerners start talking about you know what? I don't trust the North. I'm afraid of what they might try to do in the Senate. Why don't we just leave this country? Why don't we secede? And it's not just about slavery. Slavery is just one issue that falls underneath the giant umbrella of SRs. What is SR? They're talking about leaving. They're talking about seceding to preserve their what? They look at the Constitution every time and they say, if it's not listed in the Constitution, it belongs to us. We want to preserve our states' rights. States' rights. So, Henry Clay guy from the Missouri Compromise, comes up with an idea along with a new guy called Stephen Douglas, and they come up with a new compromise <laughs> called the Compromise of 1850. And this compromise includes the following. The North, you need to get something. It's a compromise. Both sides get something out of this deal. You guys get California as a free state. Are you happy? Yes, you got California on your side. California interest is free. And you got sick and tired of having your senators and representatives in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., seeing African Americans being sold on the street and at auction houses. So you got the slave trade ended in Washington, D.C. You can no longer buy or sell slaves in Washington. Washington, D.C. Technically, Washington, D.C. is in the South, ladies and gentlemen. It is surrounded by southern states. The North gets that. 
That means that if the North got a new state and it upsets the balance in the Senate, South, you must have gotten something darn good, huh? If you were to agree to that, to give the North more power in the Senate, because now the Senate is not balanced, we didn't enter any new states, you had to have gotten something really good. And you did. What does the South get? One, Utah and New Mexico territories. If they choose to have slaves, they can. There are no restrictions in the Utah and New Mexico territories on slavery. That's why on your Compromise of 1850 maps, they should be read. No restrictions. So if the settlers there decided they wanted slavery, they could have slavery. Let those people there decide. Anybody remember what else you get? Something that eventually the people in the North hate. Something called a very strict fugitive slave law. Which basically says any free or any slave that escaped and made it to the North must be returned to their owners. It's something that the South has been looking for for a long time. Fugitive, what does fugitive mean? Anybody know? What does the word fugitive mean? Run away. They get a very strong, harsh fugitive slave law. Yes. Because because there's nothing to do there and uh, not many cities and so no way to make a living but good question why didn't the slaves go to the unorganized areas and so that brings us to this map slavery Utah territories slave blue and green on this map free the two compromises the country is divided, and the division keeps growing. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.